He says, the person who has the Son, Jesus Christ, has life. The person who does not have the Son or does not believe in the Son, Jesus Christ, does not have life. But the wrath of God abides on them. Think about that. The wrath of Almighty God who created the heavens and the earth is upon a person and just hovers over them? That's a terrible thought to think about, but it's the reality. Scripture says, mankind who is born in sin is dead in their trespasses and sins, like the walking dead. And only you can become alive through the power of the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Spirit of God. For the flesh profits nothing. It is the Spirit of God that gives life. Do you know Jesus Christ? Scripture says, repent and be converted, that your sins be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. What does it mean to repent? To have a change of heart, a change of thought, a change of mind about who Jesus is and what he did. How he's fully God and fully man, died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Repent of unbelief, turn from it, and embrace Jesus Christ. Entrust your entire life over to him. See, scripture says, if anyone desires to follow him, let that person deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow him. For the person who seeks to find his life will lose it. But the person who seeks to lose his life for his sake will find it. And then he says, for what does it profit a person if they gain all that the world has to offer and in the end they lose their own soul? What will a person give in exchange for their soul? Think about Jesus. He loves you. Think about his miracles. He walked on water. He fed 5,000 men, not counting women and children, with five loaves and two fish. He brought sight to the blind. He, he, he raised the woman's son from Nain, who was dead. He raised Lazarus from the dead, who was in the tomb four days. He gave people hope, as he does today. He heals broken hearts. Only Jesus Christ can take a broken life that is lonely, a person without purpose, without hope, lonely, depressed, suicidal, and make them forgiven and something beautiful and useful in his kingdom. Only Jesus Christ can heal broken hearts because you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Many people are addicted to all kinds of things, sports, and video games, and music, and concerts, and movies, and drugs, and alcohol, and cigarettes. We're here by divine appointment. I was a missionary in Ukraine. I lived there off and on for 25 years. I didn't go there as a tourist. I went there to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I shared in trams and trolleys and buses and metros and hospitals and the schools and the universe in the streets and swap meets. The good news of the gospel. Yes, I went to Poland. I went to Moldova. Went to Israel five times. Not because I was bored or I had nothing else to do or to take pictures or just to meet people. I went there to share the good news of the gospel and to pray and to seek his face. Yes, because life without Jesus Christ is empty and foolish and vain and futile, without purpose, without hope, without forgiveness, without salvation, without protection from Satan and his demons who desire to steal, kill, and destroy your life, and without heaven. That is the plight, that is the situation for every person that is without Jesus Christ. That's why you need him to live the abundant life, the forgiven life, the life full of hope and peace. Many people can't even sleep at night. Many people are taking different pills in order to sleep, and then they take pills in order to wake up. And people are just trying to cope with life. But Jesus is the source of life and the author of life. And he wants to bless your life, and he wants to care for your life, because he loves you so much. But so many people don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ. Many people want the blessings of the kingdom without the king. Yes, it's, it's very sad. Many people sing, hark the herald angels sing, or joy to the world. 
or away in a manger, oh holy night, or silent night, or Mary did you know? Yes, we understand that he was a babe in a manger, a baby in a manger. But our question is, do you know him as your savior? That's the most important question. What a person does with Jesus Christ determines where they spend forever and ever and ever and ever. Why focus on that which is temporal in your life? You may live one year to 110 years and then eternity sets in. And what a person does with Jesus determines where they spend forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It never ends. So why focus on that which doesn't matter? Only a fulfilled life is a life knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior, as your Lord, as your God, as your King, having peace with God the Father, knowing you're a citizen of heaven, knowing your sins are forgiven, knowing your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, knowing that you're a, a follower of Christ, that you're a new creation in Christ, you've been adopted into the family of God, that you're clothed in the perfection of Christ, because he lived a perfect life in your place and he satisfied God's holy justice and wrath that was pointed against sin and he died on the cross and he shed his blood and he rose again on the third day triumphantly, gloriously, victoriously he conquered sin and death and the grave, Satan, hell, condemnation, judgment and the demons and he offers forgiveness of sins and salvation in heaven to all who put their faith and trust in him and him alone only in Jesus Christ can you be saved. Don't think you can continue in your life without being a target of Satan who desires to steal, kill, and destroy your life. Many people die of car accidents and cancer and COVID and heart attacks and strokes and war and food poisoning and domestic violence and just so many methods. Since we were here about a week ago, if statistics are correct, about a million people on the planet have died and entered into eternity. With eight billion people on the planet Earth? Yes, no guarantee you're gonna live another 24 hours. That's why there's an urgency to the gospel. See, your heart can be some co so hardened and disinterested in God that you forget about the fact that you're a sinner and that you need forgiveness and salvation. You interview different people and they say, oh, I'm a good person. And then they compare themselves to some dictator who killed many people. Well, if you just do one sin your whole life, you can't go to heaven. One time. He says, if you violate or trespass or offend in one area of God's law, you're guilty of his whole law. In other words, as if we've committed all the sins. We're totally guilty. Only Jesus lived a perfect life without sin. That's why he's the perfect savior. Even John the Baptist introduced Jesus. He said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Nobody else can take away the sin. Not the Pope, not Mary the mother of Jesus, not praying to dead saints, not good works, not your accolades or your accomplishments or your diploma or your job or your money or infant baptism or being a good person or following some philosophy of man or world religion that's popular today. Only through Jesus Christ can you be forgiven and saved and set free from the bondage of sin and death and have abundant life and know that you're a citizen of heaven and you have his promises, his protection, his provision, his and answered prayer and you have his presence. Yes, have you experienced the presence of God in your life? There is nothing that compares to the presence of God. Scripture says, if you drink of the water of this life, you'll thirst again. But Jesus said, if you drink of the water that I give, you'll never thirst. For out of your inner boast being would flow rivers of living water. Yes, his presence. There's nothing that can be compared to the presence of God. Are you the friend of God or are you an enemy of God? Scripture teaches those that are outside of Christ are actually not the friend of God, but the enemy of God. And for the Christian that's in idolatry and seeking their own desires, it says to seek the things of the earth is earthly, sensual, and demonic. But the wisdom from above is peaceable, willing to yield, full of good fruits, without partiality, and holy. 
Yes. Scripture says, set your mind on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. In other words, have an eternal perspective in your life. Seek first the kingdom of God. People seek everything that they want, and they put God last in their life. And they don't take thought or inventory of their soul. And it's very sad. We're giving away these green books, these blue books, these uh, Gospels of John. Yes, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. If you're not interested in the Word of God, how do you know you're a child of God? How do you know you're forgiven of your sins? How do you know how to live pleasing to God if you don't read His Word? Scripture says the person who hears the Word of God and doesn't apply it is like someone who builds their house upon the sand and when the storm and the flood comes, great is the fall of that house because it's built on the sand. That's someone who hears the word but doesn't apply it in their life but the person who hears the word of god and applies it in their life is like someone who builds their house upon the rock and the rock is symbolic of jesus christ he is our rock he is our fortress our strong tower our deliverer our mighty god our prince of peace our wonderful counselor he is the great i am yes those who hear the word of god and apply it are like someone who builds their house upon the rock the rock being jesus and when the storm comes and the flood comes, that foundation, that house, that building, that life will stand because it's founded upon the rock, Jesus Christ. Scripture says, not all those that say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. There'll be some that will stand before God on the, after they pass away and they'll say, didn't I not prophesy in your name and do wonderful works in your name and miracles and cast out demons and to some he'll say depart from me I never knew you you worker of lawlessness how much better to hear well done good and faithful servant enter into the joy of the Lord what a contrast scripture says enter by the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and there's many that go that way but narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life and there's few that find it few people are actually interested in Christ we share the gospel here many, many times. Nick's been coming here for eight years off and on almost every Saturday, with the exception of when he goes on a mission trip. People share the gospel all over, but for the most part, people want to do what they want to do, and they just reject Jesus Christ because they don't want someone over their life telling them what to do. People want to live their own life. How sad. It's a prison sentence because Satan is a terrible taskmaster and he studies your life and he waits for that moment to capitalize on your life in a way that you're not even prepared through so many temptations that you won't know how to bear it. But in Christ, says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us and he leads us, he guides us, he directs us, he protects us, he strengthens us, he empowers us, he encourages us, he fills us, he anoints us, he blesses us, he provides for us. He is our good shepherd, he is our redeemer, he is our prophet, priest, and king. He is Jesus Christ. He has no rival, he has no equal, no one is like him and no one compares to him. And he knows everything about you, every thought that's in your head, throughout your entire life, Every moment of loneliness you've ever had, every financial struggle, every sickness, every place you've been, every person you've met, every book you've read, every movie you've watched, every song you've listened to, every meal you've eaten, every restaurant you've been to, Jesus Christ knows everything and he loves you with perfect love. And he voluntarily went to the cross and he died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures triumphantly gloriously victoriously and he conquered sin and death and the grave satan hell condemnation and judgment and he offers forgiveness of sins and salvation in heaven to all who put their faith and trust in him and him alone says he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of christ in righteousness of God in Christ Jesus yes he died in your place and mine as a substitute have you received his offer of forgiveness and salvation 
Cry out to Jesus. He loves you so much.